Carlos Nelson with Cascade Media Group. And today we have one of my longtime friends. You know people, I always tell you I've, I'm a gangster posing as a businessman. And I've been out in the streets for a long time, but I don't let my past dictate my future. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've had a, a long association with this lady, Miss uh, Barbara Courtney, and she heads up uh, children's for incarcerated parents. And I asked her to come on the show today to talk about our brothers and our sisters that are incarcerated during this holiday. And uh, I think that they have been forgotten. Uh, welcome to the show, Barbara. Thank you for inviting me, Carlos. Tell our audience a little bit about yourself and, and tell our audience a little bit about your program. Well, uh, I have children of incarcerated parents and it been uh, since 2013, I incorporated it in 2014. Uh, and the reason why I created uh, in, uh, children of incarcerated parents is because I was part of that system and I knew how it affected my children. Uh, at that time, there was no program to have caregivers or the children to um, address their mental health, their they trauma. And so that's how it was created. And um, to me, it's important to keep our children connected with uh, their parents, if it's feasible, if it's possible. Sometimes it's not, but the majority of the time it is. Talk about some of the people uh, that you work with in this effort. Well, I have worked with many families throughout the years. And let me just say this, it has been, uh, I don't want to say a roller coaster. Sometimes you, it's just like we was talking earlier. Uh, and you were saying, I had to smile to myself about when you were addressing the community and sometimes we could take things personal or get offended by what someone say and everything else. Uh, when you're dealing with children who is impacted by incarceration, you have to have a uh, thick skin because sometimes the children don't understand, the community don't understand, nor the caregivers. And one of the things is uh, that saddens me when it comes to the children who are impacted by incarceration. We have heart disease uh, for children. We have uh, sickle cells and everything else. But you hardly hear anybody talk about the children who are impacted by incarceration. It's like people are ashamed of it, people don't want to talk about it, or people judge their parents, say they shouldn't do the crime, but they forget, forget about the impact it has on innocent children. Two things I want to uh, ask you. One, I know uh, a couple of years ago uh, when we had you on the show, uh, you were talking about access to communications, to telephones, mm -hmm. and and what have you. Where, where are we at on that uh, with incarcerated uh, parents being able yes. to connect? And, and since then, they got the Zoom things going now. T talk, talk a little bit about that. Uh, as you know, Carlos, when we you first interviewed me, you we was trying to work on uh, keeping our children connected through Zoom. And we had even the uh, connected with the Missouri Department of Correction. And we had sit down, not only with them, but the public library. And the public library, along with another organization, was going to provide the monitors and everything else. But then there came along a private uh, company and offer free iPads to the vendors and say they didn't have to pay for it. And the Missouri Department of Correction decided not to partnership with the library nor us. They provided the uh, offenders 
with the iPad, but what they didn't provide them with, with the funds, because they still have to pay for everything, everything. The iPad is uh, free, but they still have to, and they still do not have video conference in place to this day, as we speak. They do not have video conference. See, I uh, at that time when I asked you uh, earlier about some of the people you work with, uh, the late Alvin Sykes, I know uh, you had been working with him in regards yeah. to incarceration. I knew that you had been working with Senator David Haley mm -hmm. in, in uh, that realm of incarceration. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I said, how do you uh, feel uh, the children are at this point during this time of season and uh, their parents are incarcerated. What do yeah. you have to say on that subject? To 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 be uh, honest, it's difficult during the holidays for the children. It uh, yes, they get gifts from uh, organizations like the Angel Tree or other or churches and everything else. But at the end of the day. You know, we can give gifts all day long. The children still need their parents. The parents still need their children. It's a crisis still going on where families are still having difficulty keeping the children connected with their parents due to finance or ship or that parents that's incarcerated uh, was the breadwinner. And so we don't see how the children are still struggling in school, still struggling in the community, just because uh, we give them a toy. That's not fixing the issue, because at the end of the day, they still want their mother. They still want their father. So um, it is difficult during the holidays. What are some of the main obstacles that your organization uh, is facing uh, and has faced in regards to funding? Well, the OSCO uh, we're facing is financially, but it's still at the end of the day, we do meet, whether we have a finance or not, we still have to meet the needs by even if we don't have any finance, we still able to do counseling. And we do that pro bono with a licensed therapist or a licensed uh, social worker. And uh, uh, and I have to be honest too, uh, we apply for a grant uh, and with everybody that I partnership, including you, uh, because you have did so much for this organization you have. Uh, and uh, we did not get the grant but that did not discourage me because we have to still move forward. We have to take responsibility, especially in the black community. We, we have to now always look for somebody to rescue us. We have to rescue ourselves. And so that's for me, I always challenge myself to come up with new ideas, not new ideas, but something that I always have to look at my own situation because even since I started this organization, uh, my grandson uh, was has, is, is incarcerated currently. And to look at his son come on and get emotional to, uh, when he visited him some months back to be able to hold his father, he just broke down and cried. And he's under 10 years old. And that was his first time holding him in five years. So that was a challenge. And it touched me emotionally when my grandson shared that with me. So sometimes- Seemed like it was to, touching you just then. Yeah, yes. But sometimes when I have reached out to families that's impacted by incarceration, even within my own family, there's a still a shame stigma on it. It's like they don't want to know people to know 
they have somebody, they should have somebody incorporated. But then how can we help one another? If well, we this is what I want to say. I'm going to cut you off on that. We talked about some things off camera, but I think all the problems uh, can be solved. What do you have to say about block voting and group economics? Mm -hmm. That's one, one question I want you to say. And then the shame factor. Uh, I had to realize we talked off camera. Uh, and that's why I said I'm gangsta posing as a mm -hmm. businessman, because the examples, uh, the Europeans, uh, it's no other way to say it. They control 100% uh, of all the images that I've received throughout my lifetime uh, from education going to Eurocentric. And they set this system up to snag at least 75% of all black males uh, to uh, get into the criminal justice system. And especially with the drug act, the war on drugs and all of that, that has affected probably three of our generations for sure. And mm -hmm. soon as this stuff start hitting their committed, their community is a health issue or is this, and the sentencing and all of that. So the shame, uh, it's note to me when you understand, and that's the importance of what I'm always talking about, our communications network, when you hearing rational explanations for why uh, all these things have happened distinctly to uh, people of color, then you understand it's not your fault. You, it, it, it's your fault, but it's not your fault. Yeah. And so how do you feel about block voting and group economics in relations to solving 99% of the problems that we have as people. Can you expound on that uh, a little bit when you say, how do I feel? Right, what, what I'm saying, do you think that that will provide the answer? Because from my perspective, the only way you get a seat at the table is if you have something that they want. It's like when McDonald's and, and, and the, the fast food people they were using the saturated fats and the frying of the french fries and all of that. This is about 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. Moms around America say, we're not buying that crap. And they changed. On anything that you uh, have an effect on the pocketbook, they're going to change. Mm -hmm. They're going to change it. The gas prices was through the roof, right? But they didn't came down because People that's in charge of that say, I ain't going to be in charge unless I do something to lower that. And so when we use our vote strategically, we don't have all the votes. But at the end of the day, if we let the Democrats, the Republicans or whoever fight it out, that block vote will be the deciding factor on any issue no matter what it is on the planet. And it's no different from if you follow politics, how one Democrat was holding up a lot of legislations because they needed his vote. And they had to make concessions, just like the Republican Party now. They have all of those uh, MAGA people that's in position. So the regular uh, conservatives, the traditional, they got to go along with them because they got that block vote. And if we don't understand that and have conversation about that, we'll never change anything. Well, that goes along with earlier when we was talking. And I, uh, I know that one of the things I can say, um, you're going to tell your truth and you're going to be real with it, whether people like it or not. And I like it, you know, because it challenged me. But one of the things you had told me about, you got to be consistent. You got to be consistent. And you was right on target. You know, how are we going to help uh, anyone if we don't be consistent 
and come and look at and look at who we dealing with and who we holding accountable, even ourselves. We can't say one thing and do another. Uh, and it is, we have to get out here and not only with the economic and with the black poet or whoever, we got to stand with integrity and believe in uh, what we believe. And the thing is, I keep coming back to what you said because you was right on point and I'm guilty of it. If you love something and it's in your passion, you got to be consistent. Whoever don't uh, uh, come and fight with you in the war, you're gonna have to know how to address the issue, uh, stand up for the issue and fight for the issue. That is very important. Uh, do we get enough votes or do we, we, uh, it's just like, I'm going to vote for you because I like you. No, I'm going to vote for you. It's about what you bring into the community. How are you making life change? What are you doing to make it change? And so to me, that's why children of incarcerated parents is so, this is my baby because the reason why it's my baby, because I'm, I'm a part of it. I'm a part of it. And the thing is, am I guilty of some things? Yes, I am. Even when my grandson caught his case, I almost shut down. Oh, I don't want nobody to know my business. I don't want to know any. No, this is affecting everybody. It's affecting everybody. What you going to do about it? And that's one of the things I can say. And I say it with my heart. That's what I love about you because you challenge me and you, hey, you can't play. If this is your baby, you can't play. I don't know if I answer your question now. I'm just yeah, you did. You. I'm saying mm -hmm. is it, I, you touched on a few more things because I made a statement about a month ago. I said 99% of all the black people I know will say anything you want them to say, <laughs> depending who's paying them. And mm -hmm. I got a big response. Most people agree, but it, in actual reality, if 99% of the people agree with, with that statement, then that includes you, me, and everybody else This mm -hmm. black. And wow. that's where the disconnect comes. They like the statement, but don't want to look in the mirror and say, I need to stop this. Right. I need to stop these bad habits. Uh -huh. So, uh, tell our audience how they can get in touch with you, how they can donate, and be of help to your organization before we close it on down. They can go to our website, www.childrenip.org, and there's a, a donation button on there. Also, they can contact me through 816-517-9504. I'm always looking for a good team. All right. I need it. Uh, it's a pleasure having you on the show, as always. And as we always close, when you invest in your community, you're really just investing in yourself. Good night. Thank you, Carlos. The program is brought to you by the Kansas City Business Association.